we are at uh, Amazon uh, Recognition Service, and I'm going to uh, click on the Try Demo. And you'll see here that um, it actually automatically detected uh, this photo that we saw earlier in our slides. Uh, it detects object, it detects scene, it, de it detects um, any persons here, and it gives this output, which is the uh, uh, confidence score uh, that's given on the likelihood that it sees, for example, a car. It's about 98.8% uh, sure uh, that a, a car or some sort of vehicle is in this photo. I'm pretty sure that there's a person or a human somewhere. And if I go down, uh, unclick the more button, I can see here, um, it, fairly confident that it sees a skateboard in this photo, uh, that it's an urban environment, There's it's downtown, there's various buildings, these types of things. So. That's just a small example of object scene detection. Uh, and I would encourage you to upload your own photo here uh, and have it uh, have Amazon recognition analyze the photo and give you some sort of output just to have a little bit of fun with it. And I would encourage you and your students to do that uh, uh, as well. Another photo here of a, of a kind of a city or urban environment. Um, it detects water. Um, some sort of different various forms of architecture. Potentially there's a collection of buildings, so maybe identifying a neighborhood uh, or some waterfront there as well. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do is, uh, our focus really today is on analyzing faces and that's the, the form and function. Uh, so the very first thing we're gonna do is go to this facial analysis um, uh, feature on the panel. Uh, so you want to navigate over here, click on facial analysis, and you'll see here in a span of a few moments, it's analyzed uh, this image uh, and it gives uh, some output here. Um, and this feature really allows you to analyze faces in an image and receive what we call a JSON response. So we're going to uh, investigate uh, various um, outputs from JSON here uh, in these uh, environments. Uh, so you'll see here, um, for example, um, whether or not, uh, actually the, uh, let's say the approximate age range of this person uh, is given here and it gives, uh, it gives ranges for that um, as, you, uh, you, as you scroll down uh, as well and gives percentages for that. Uh, what I wanna highlight here is the fact that um, it highlights emotional sentiment. So what's the likelihood that the individual in this photo is smiling? Well, they're about 91.7, almost 92% sure. Um, appears to be happy, right? Based on those uh, those kind of data points that it's captured here, uh, and I can find um, the the JSON response and looking at the facial details uh, of it, and even the emotional sentiment. Uh, so that's that 90, 99 percent uh, confidence that uh, this individual appears to be happy. Uh, for example. Uh, and uh, for our purposes, uh, for this section, uh, we are going to, um, uh, we're going to upload an image. And you can find this image in the tutorial. If I scroll down a little bit, uh, you'll see here under step two, uh, we're going to open and save this, uh, this, tut this, uh, this image here. Uh, and we're going to upload that and get some sort of analysis uh, on it. So um, I would encourage you um, to do that. Uh, click on that image, save it locally to your device, uh, and upload it here into um, the facial analysis uh, section uh, of, the, uh, of the service. So it takes a few moment, moments to uh, analyze the photo, and you'll see you'll see here it detects um, uh, all the uh, well at least all the humans in this photo, um, and it pulls out a number of uh, a number of responses here uh, for moving uh, uh, for moving uh, forward uh, with the facial detection. So it identifies this individual uh, that they uh, looks like they have a face, right? They appear to be male approximate age range uh, based on data collected from uh, previous examples of individuals of um, uh, of this particular um, um, age category uh, and then their the likelihood of their emotional response uh, so that's a nice feature and of course I can go down and get the JSON response uh, for um, the um, the various folks in this uh, in this photo uh, so that's quite nice um, and so uh, what we're going to do actually here, I'm going to go down and look at the, um, we're going to look at the uh, emotional response uh, that's given of this particular uh, individual. 
uh, and actually, um, the, it detects three emotions, right? It detects um, actually a number of emotions. If I scroll down here, you'll see uh, what's the likelihood of uh, this individual being happy or sad or surprised. Uh, and you'll see here, uh, there's a confidence score of about 99.35% that this individual is happy uh, and uh, much, much lower in areas of maybe uh, calm or confused or angry, uh, less than 1% uh, in those spaces. So that's a nice, um, that's a nice feature rich uh, example. So you can think maybe as a developer detecting emotions and images and videos really makes it possible to quickly catalog a digital library uh, by emotion. Uh, another use case for detecting emotion is to really amplify um, ad targeting so users can receive personalized experience, experiences tailored to their uh, current uh, emotion. So let's play around a little bit with uh, facial comparison. Uh, that's another um, kind of feature of Amazon uh, recognition. So is this the face, is face A the same as face B, for example? So what's the likelihood that this individual is the same as this one here? And you see the similarity uh, that Amazon recognition pulls out about 99.8% accuracy um, and not the same uh, or not similar for the other uh, photos uh, in that space. Uh, for this activity, we're going to uh, leverage, uh, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. We're going to leverage uh, uh, this individual. So um, uh, a bonus number of points if you can identify uh, who this person is. Uh, this is actually um, Andy Jassy, uh, this, the CEO of Amazon Web Services. Uh, and you can uh, save his image uh, locally on your device. Uh, and we're going to upload that into um, uh, we're going to upload that into the um, the facial comparison features here. So uh, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to save that his image here. And you'll see uh, Andy Jassy does not look like any of the individuals as we would have guessed uh, in the comparison photo. Uh, and we get a nice kind of JSON response uh, outlining uh, that as well using those bounding boxes that we talked about. Uh, and then we're going to actually here compare Andy Jassy to the photo that we uploaded earlier, which is that family photo. Okay, and we'll get uh, some interesting results here. We're going to look down at the JSON in a moment, but you can you can actually quickly see that there is no likeness of Andy Jassy in this other uh, in this other photo uh, as we see as we would expect. Uh, but we could verify that through the response uh, and look for um, any similarity with the other uh, individuals. So you'll see here uh, for the first face match, there's about a 13.8% comparison, uh, a similarity uh, between Andy Jassy and the um, and the first individual, which was uh, this gentleman. So didn't quite make the cut, but he uh, it's the highest percentage out of all of the other uh, individuals that are highlighted, and you can uh, measure and compare out of 100, a score out of 100 in the similarity uh, section here, uh, what each of the uh, participants uh, received in that environment. So uh, not really matching up to any of the other um, uh, the any of the other uh, people in the photo there. So that's kind of quite an interesting um, uh, comparison uh, for some similarities. So again, as a developer, maybe you're thinking comparing faces at scale can be used in applications to track persons of interest, maybe create a, a face-based uh, employee verification system, or provide maybe a VIP experience uh, to guests staying at a, a maybe a hospitality uh, venue. Uh, so that's where we see many organizations leveraging things like facial comparison. Okay, uh, and then we're going to stay in this uh, in this uh, particular feature of Amazon recognition uh, under face comparison, uh, and we're going to um, upload um, a uh, another photo. This time we're going to replace uh, the Andy Jassy photo with um, an image of of again this family, slightly different. Um, uh, in comparison, and it pulls out some feature-rich examples here. So you'll see uh, in the response, it highlights this individual in both photos here and here. And, and Amazon recognition says, well, there's about a 98.7% uh, 
um, confidence that this is the same individual. And then comparing that individual to the other uh, individuals in the photo, we don't see any real comparison. And I can get verification of that through, uh, through the response uh, in, uh, in JSON here. So uh, another interesting uh, example. Uh, of how this works. So you can play around with this, have your students play around, have them upload their different photos um, if they want to. Um, you can, maybe they can share that uh, via vis-a-vis -vis screenshot with you in your in your courses, um, or uh, um, find a new and interesting ways of leveraging Amazon recognition uh, in, your, uh, in your environments. Uh, so uh, that's just a brief uh, glimpse at uh, Amazon recognition tutorial. Uh, so we learned really how to use the console and analyze uh, and compare faces. Uh, you also were able to perform this feature using uh, the API so you can operate at scale here as and when you need to. Um, using Amazon recognition when you need to perform things like facial analysis at scale without worrying about infrastructure or training a model for identifying a person's uh, of interest uh, or catalog, cataloging a digital library or creating a face-based uh, employee uh, verification system, or maybe even looking at sentiment analysis, uh, detecting emotion. So that's just a, a brief, uh, short introduction into Amazon recognition tutorial. Uh, we're going to um, round out uh, this session uh, with a brief, uh, just a brief introduction to um, AWS Educate. Uh, if this is your first time uh, hearing about Educate and what it is and and what we do, I would encourage you to, to um, build on your knowledge. Um, AWS Educate really provides multiple resources uh, for educators. Among the resources are access to the console, which we saw uh, where you can use uh, your AWS promotional credits, uh, curricular resources, and AWS classrooms, uh, which is that tool that students can use to complete a lab. Uh, and activities for your class in a controlled uh, environment. We also offer a number of professional development uh, um, resources for you. So if you're looking to, to get skilled up on AWS yourself, you can leverage the content repository that we have. We also have uh, links towards our AWS training sites. Uh, if you'd like to get certified, um, you can have um, the content as well as what we call pathways for students that you can leverage for uh, course assignments uh, as well. So as I highlighted earlier, uh, th this uh, particular tutorial leverages uh, a starter uh, template, uh, and that's built out of the classroom experience. If you're um, unfamiliar about uh, launching a classroom, uh, go ahead and look at uh, the step-by-step -step process uh, uh, via the um, uh, the console uh, for AWS Educate, uh, and it will walk you through the steps of creating a classroom. Uh, but the classrooms here are really providing that hands-on learning environment for students. Um, educators can request this environment uh, for uh, the entire length of their course uh, with preloaded credit, so students can complete uh, labs and projects and assignments using real-world AWS services like we saw with Amazon uh, recognition. And of course, educators have the visibility into students' uh, AWS Educate uh, environment so they can monitor students' activity uh, and progress or maybe even help students uh, troubleshoot. Um, that's in the classroom experience uh, that, that uh, I'm highlighting there. Uh, and of course, AWS Educate uh, curricular resources and content can be broken into really three main categories, um, AWS produced content, faculty developed content, and labs. Um, AWS uh, produced content includes things like videos and white papers and tutorials, um, all available for free for you to use uh, in your own environments or for your own professional development. Uh, and this is the same content AWS provides to its customers and partners, so it's directly from, uh, from industry. Uh, there's faculty developed content, uh, which is uh, course materials developed by AWS Educate faculty all around the globe. Uh, it includes resources such as syllabi, presentations and assignments, how-to guides and online courses. Uh, and many of these resources can be imported uh, directly into your uh, LMS. Uh, and then finally, the labs uh, allow students to gain those hands-on experience uh, using AWS services uh, in the actual AWS console. And we saw that via the classroom uh, environment. 
there are guardrails uh, around the classroom uh, labs uh, to prevent students from getting in, in too deep and causing cost overrun and things like that. So that's where you as an educator kind of step in, uh, define uh, the credit for most accounts, uh, for most templates in classrooms, um, $50 is the default credit amount. Uh, we find that most students don't use more than $30 worth of credit uh, in the in the classroom experience. Um, and so, um, you know, just using your best judgment there in as and when you create, and you can create multiple classrooms uh, for your students. And all of those labs are provided for you uh, free. Uh, and then finally, we have uh, just highlighting uh, kind of uh, what else is involved and other resources on uh, AWS Educate. Um, oftentimes, too, there's a vast number of resources, and oftentimes it's difficult to figure out where to start. Uh, and so uh, we have um educate content creators uh, who first look at foundational cloud knowledge and skills, so introduction to cloud computing. Uh, that's about 45 hours of content, I believe, uh, in the education portal. Can review the skills and the knowledge required uh, that's needed for uh, for you and your students and your courses. Uh, we have some educators that are um, going to their school boards and actually building out cloud degrees uh, for their institutions. So that could be another avenue uh, for further knowledge. Uh, we also have something called the Cloud Ambassador Program. Uh, for educators that uh, have become more experienced on Educate uh, and building out um, whole courses and syllabi, uh, they can be um, really at the forefront of thinking in uh, in, uh, in cloud spaces uh, and have access to um, a, a cloud ambassador community uh, to build upon as well. So that's just a short introduction and primer on AWS Educate. Um, I hope you found that information helpful and the tutorial helpful. Uh, as I said, um, I will include the link to the step-by-step uh, -step guide. Uh, make sure that you uh, also check uh, Amazon uh, recognition page for more information on that particular uh, service. And I wanna thank you all for uh, attending the how to detect, analyze, and compare faces uh, with Amazon recognition.